Hello and thank you for joining us on It Is Written Canada. When our daughters were much younger, I used to let them sit on my lap while I was driving our car along an old dirt road near our house in the country. Or they would also sit on my lap while I was working on the skid steer moving dirt in our yard. And they would come into the house so excited announcing, Daddy taught me how to drive, now I can drive by myself. They thought they were able to drive by themselves, but the truth was that I was controlling the speed and the direction of the vehicle. I learned a spiritual truth from how my daughters thought they could drive by themselves. I often think that because I can't see God, I'm on my own, driving my own course and controlling the steering wheel. But in fact, I'm sitting on His lap, his arms are around me, guiding my hands and letting me know that I have nothing to fear. In the Bible, King David declared his faith in God while others were telling him to panic. He avowed, In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, Flee as a bird to your mountain? David knew that God was in the driver's seat, and his faith in the Lord kept him from panicking. Calm, confident and composed. Our special guest on Irish Written Canada today is Noamiko Madden, whose friends, family, fellow actors and even his acting agent thought he was completely senseless when he decided to put his trust in the Lord and let Jesus take the wheel. In a moment you will hear Noamiko's story. Hello and welcome again to It Is Written Canada. Our guest today is Noamiko Madden, who saw one door after another opening for him to progress higher and higher in his acting career. However, he knew that he had to make a decision about the direction that his life would take, and we're going to talk to him about that today. Welcome to It Is Written, Noamiko. Hey, thanks so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, we really are happy that you're here. Uh, Nomiko, you, we're going to talk about your acting career, but before we go there, let's go all the way back to your childhood. I know you were born in Quebec, and we wanted you to talk about your childhood. But there's a really cool story about how your parents met. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm the product of persistence. <laughs> um, the legend has it that uh, on the island of Montreal, where I'm from, um, my father was driving down the street and he saw this really beautiful lady walking down the street. And he was from Jamaica, she's from Grenada, so they're both from the Caribbean. And so they kind of noticed each other from, you know, being out from out of town. And so he, he drove by and he thought, maybe I could just ask her out. And so he pulled over and asked her if she wanted a ride and she said no. He drove away. And then he said, no, nah, she was just too beautiful. I got I to gotta wheel back around. And so she, he actually literally on the highway, the Carrier Expressway came back around and said, hey, listen, I mean, what could it hurt? Just a ride. You know, I just want to give you a ride a couple blocks. And she's like, no, I just live a couple blocks away. I'm fine. And he literally drove around after being rejected. I think it was like six times. And uh, the walls of emotional Jericho came down. <laughs> and she finally said, yes, I'll take the ride for like one block. And then he got her number. And the rest is history. I'm here. Um, but the interesting thing, though, was that um, my father, he was raised in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, my mom was raised Catholic. And so what happened was he didn't want to marry her immediately without her being exposed to the Adventist message. So he brought her to my grandmother and she kind of said, hey, you need to hear this message and taught her the Bible, taught her, you know, all about um, spiritual things in the gospel. And she became a Seventh-day Adventist before my father married her. Um, but my mom, she had her own interesting spiritual experience, which was when she was about 17 years old, uh, she had what they call a charismatic experience. And she likes just 
at one point felt like she had to become a nun. Mm -hmm. This deeply spiritual, like she was crying and it was like a, a pivotal moment in her life. And she's like, I, I, but I don't want to become a nun. And so she, she kind of said, no, I, I'm just going to live my life. And she kind of suppressed that feeling as you know, deep as it was. And then what happened was when she was pregnant with me, about four months in, she found out that she was gonna have a boy. And for some reason, it triggered that experience again. Because she thought she was gonna have a girl. She just was convinced she was gonna have a girl. And then she found that she was gonna have a boy. Then that charismatic experience happened again. She was crying, but she's like, well, I can't dedicate my life to, I can't become a nun now. I'm Adventist and you know, I'm about to have this child. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dedicate this child to you. And so she got down on her knees, she put her hands on her stomach, and she said, this child is dedicated to your service, Lord. And, uh, and she didn't tell me until like 21 years later. <laughs> so disclaimer to all the parents out there, you know, if you dedicate your children to God, let them know. <laughs> so they don't, you know, have a, an experience before that. But anyway, that's what happened. And then I remember ever since childhood, I came out of the womb and God was real. Like I believed in God from the get-go. I never doubted him in his existence. I felt, I felt like if I turned around quick enough, I would see God, you know, or my guardian angel, you know what I mean? It was always very real to me ever since childhood, so. So you've always had this very deep faith in God. What was that like growing up? So in theory, it would be good, uh, but sometimes it didn't work out as well <laughs> because I went, to, I went into elementary school, you know, with kind of my whole... Um, ideology of like, I need to spread faith, I need to spread God. But it turned out um, I was not spreading that so much because, you know, as Adventists, we have certain um, guidelines for life that we live by. So I don't eat pork. So the kids would be trading, you know, sandwiches in class and be like, hey, Namika, want my pork sandwich? I'll be like, I will eat no such thing. <laughs> and they would just be like, okay. You know, and they're like, Namiko, are you going to come to the Halloween party? I'm like, I don't celebrate the devil's holiday. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, and I had, you know, the whole Sabbath thing. And so going to public school and having my, my, con my firm convictions was always a little bit of an awkward thing, you know. And sometimes we would sit down in class and they would be like, hey, what religion are you? And they'd be like, you know, Sikh, Hindu, Buddhist, Baptist. And they're like, what about you, Namiko? Oh, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. They're like, what? Every day a dentist? What is that? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, no. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Protestant, you know, and they'd just be like, what? What are you talking about? We don't know. We've never heard of that, you know? And so I was like, okay, that's a problem. That's a problem, Lord, because the more I try to share my faith kind of in the, you know, young fire cycle way that I, I had it at that time, I realized people weren't catching on. And so I was like, there's a problem. Adventism needs some star power. And I thought about, you know, how like Ronald McDonald is a mascot for McDonald's. Tom Cruise is a mascot for Scientology. I'm like, I'm going to be the Adventist Will Smith. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be the first well-known Adventist actor to promote my faith. That was my idea. So Nomika, how did you get into acting? Sure, um, that was a, a pretty circuitous route because um, as a child, like I guess I had to realize what my gift was, right? And the way that I realized it was you know, Saturday mornings when a preacher's preaching, what do kids like to do? Everything else but listen, right? <laughs> Sometimes. And so for me and my cousins, it would be sitting down and drawing and doing artwork, and then they would all look at my art and make fun of it. Or Friday nights, instead of, uh, you know, just doing the regular thing that we did on Friday nights, we would have like Adventist Idol and have singing competitions, and they would all be like, oh, Domingo, you can't sing, ha 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 ha, you know, just make fun of me. And I was like, you know what? Enough of that, I'm gonna go hang out by myself. And so I started to spend a lot more time in isolation. And when you do that, what you play with is not people, but your imagination. And the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. And so I was able to cultivate my imagination to the degree that I really could believe and create worlds in my mind. And, and it actually started to impact those things that I did. So like I got into the arts, started getting awards and you know, mathematics and arts and, and performance and stuff like that later on. And so I realized that, yeah, like my imagination was my best friend. So basically what happens is I go to high school and uh, there's high school drama and um, I end up going into drama class and it just, it just starts working out, you know? People really like the scenes that I start creating. I start imagining scenes and the teacher loves them and I start getting high grades in, in high school drama. And it just kept going really well until like grade nine. Some of my friends said, hey, I heard, like that weren't in my class, a friend outside of my class said, I heard that you were really good in drama. 
my sister is uh, part of a modeling agency that also does acting, why don't you join? So I was like, well, what do I have to lose, right? So I make the call, uh, talk to the lady, and she's like, oh, no, Nico, you can join my agency. It's just $500. And I was like, okay, $500. I was like, mom, can I borrow $500? Don't worry, I'm good for it. You know, you know where I live. <laughs> um, and so I borrowed the 500 bucks from her, and uh, you know, she, she took some photos and gave some acting classes. And anytime an agent does that, watch out, you know what I mean? But because they're supposed to make money off of you, not make money from you. But anyway, I paid the money and um, I waited about six months and did not hear a single thing. No auditions, no sign of any films or anything like that until one day the phone finally rings. Da -da -da -da. Hello? No, Miko, guess what? I have an audition for you. And I'm like, finally. She's like, yes, it's for this YTV show called Are You Afraid of the Dark? It's uh, for this Friday. Uh, I think you can get it. You're an amazing actor. Go get it. It's Friday at 6.30. Okay, bye. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm like, man, I finally, you know, this is great. Got the script. And I'm like, hold on a second. And I was like, Friday at 6.30, check the calendar. And I'm like, 6.30 in November in Montreal. That's... Sad. Sunset. And so I'm like, Lord have mercy. How in the world is it that my first audition is on a Sabbath, you know? And I'm like wanting to get into acting for God, right? So you can see the whole dilemma is just like, and so I'm wondering whether I should go. I start asking my brother, I start asking friends. And, you know, just thinking about it and like my mom's like, are you sure you're going to go? Are you sure you're not going to go? Like, are you sure? You know, she's going through a dilemma herself. So we're just like, okay, what's going to happen? And I remember one night I was just kind of reflecting on the whole thing. And then like God gave me this, this imaginative thought where it's like 20 years in the future. And it's the Academy Awards. And the best actor goes to... Momiko Madden! Da, 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 da. You do the kiss and you're like, you know... And it's like, tap the mic, and it's like, the first person I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank, stop. Who do they usually thank? God. And for me, he was like, don't thank me, because you broke the Sabbath on your very first step. And I was like, mercy. And I was like, it's true. If I thought about it, if my first career step is breaching God's commandments, how in the world could I expect that it was his success the rest of the way? You know, at that momentum would just be me falling. So I said, you know what? I can't do it. I can't do it. And my family's like, what? Yeah. And I was like, I just, I can't, because this is why I want to do this. I'm doing this for God, you know? And so they thought I was crazy. And I remember sitting on the steps of my church at six o'clock, 6.30, right when that time passed, you know, and looking at my watch, like, boom, there goes my first shot and maybe my only shot. And literally it felt like my only shot because months and weeks after, there was never another phone call. And literally, it felt like my only shot because months afterwards, she didn't call me again. And so it just took so long that I was like, man, this lady is not working for me. Let me just call her up and see what's going on. And I called her once again. This number is no longer in service. Please hang up and try your call again. This is a recording. I was like, what? <laughs> Mom, go to the office. We drive down to the, the, the agent's office. We see she's left town for rent. Alloué on the front porch. I was like, no. This lady skipped town with the $500 and never did a single thing with it. And I was just like, and it was raining, so no one could see you cry in that moment. And it was just kind of like one of those sad, you know, like I thought everything was over at this point, you know, there, there goes the career, so. So, Noamiko, was that the end of your acting career then? I thought so. I thought so. But there were other plans because in high school at that time, there was a school play that happened at the end of the year and I had my own monologue in there. And there was a possibility that some important people might come to, this, to the monologue and uh, that actually did end up happening. And so I did the monologue and then after I did the monologue, this tall guy with a high pitched voice came up to me. He's like, hey, I really like what you did and I'd like to represent you. And he pulls out this card and the card I can tell just from the way that the light hit the gold lines in the card. It was like, this is money in this card, <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay. And then I was about to grab the card and I was like, wait, 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 wait. I said, the first thing I got to tell you, the very first thing up front, I don't work Saturdays. Okay. So if you have a problem with that, you need to let me know now. I don't work Saturdays. And he's like, oh, that's okay. I'm Jewish. And I'm like, yes, yes. Thank you, God. And I started hugging him, almost kissing him, you know, jumping up and down like I'd won the lottery. And it literally felt like I won the lottery because literally the next week, 
these, he had me in auditions and I've come to find out they're one of the biggest uh, agencies in Canada. They have uh, offices in Los Angeles. They run the Just for Laughs in Canada. Awesome people. And I'm just like, okay, okay, this is what was supposed to happen, you know? And so from right there, things start picking up. Um, I had auditions right away. And within a short time, I got my first role, my first speaking role on camera. And it was with Vanessa Williams. I played her brother in a Christmas film and my family got together at Christmas and we all watched the movie and they're like, there go, yeah, Like, I think they all thought I, they were gonna get rich, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you know, things started for me, but I was like, well, it's not that much, but I mean, it is, you know, something. So uh, it was really exciting to, to see that beginning and, and I felt like God had brought me full circle. Like, hey, you took that first step and now things are advancing. So things are advancing and your dream is coming true, you're becoming a star, but you're doing this all for the glory of God. Did you know at this stage, did your mother tell you that before you were born, she had dedicated you to God? She did not. She did not at this time. But it's weird because it was like, it, the, the, the calling came in the packaging, you know what I mean? I knew for some reason that I was supposed to do something for God and um, I just kept pushing forward and in fact, you know, you hear that as a young child, like, you know, be careful the entertainment industry, you know, if you're a watcher of the entertainment industry, but like to be a participator in the industry is a whole nother thing. And, and so I, I, I prayed and prayed and I said, okay, Lord, I'm doing this for real. And so we started pursuing and, and uh, things started opening up. Did you get clarity from reading the Bible, praying to answer that question? Should I go into this or not? I did, I did, and I, and I was digging, and I was reading, and I was studying, and there was, a, like I said, there was nothing that really told me, stop, you know? And so I felt like, okay, I'm doing this for God so I can keep going, and I kept going. But what happened was there was a moment where I started to question everything. As success start, started to come in, um, I got to the point where I didn't have to audition for certain roles anymore. Um, they're just being offered for me, and then, and like, I, I would, you know, sometimes the rule would be like, okay, Namiko, you're gonna be the cheating boyfriend. You're gonna be doing this with the person in bed, and then when the husband walks in, you're gonna get up and run into the into the closet or something, and we're gonna see your ha huh, ha huh, for a couple of seconds. Like, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing those roles. I'm doing this for God because I want to do stuff that my kids can watch 20 years later. I don't want the scam videos to show me, you know what I mean? Uh, feeling bad about what, what I did earlier on. So. Um, so I was feeling like this is the direction I should be going. And then one day as success started to come, I felt like something was wrong. Uh, I had just gotten um, the first season of the show completed and then there was a second season offered and I, I was like, something felt wrong. Like I was getting away with murder. And the rich young ruler story in the Bible where he comes up to Jesus and he's like, hey, I've done everything right. Like what's missing? What's wrong? Why do I feel like something's missing? And Jesus tells him, he's like, you know, sell everything you have, give it to the poor and come follow me. And I was like, I don't think God has asked me to do that, but I just can't figure out what is the sense that I have that I know the truth, it's the last days, and yet I'm about to be this big successful actor at the same time. It's like these, you know, two different contrasting ideas. And so I was just trying to figure myself out, my life out at that point, and, uh, and it was hard. Mm, you got this inner conflict happening. Mm -hmm. Exactly, deep inner conflict. So, Nomika, how did you manage to resolve this inner conflict? Great question, yeah. Um, so at this point, I'm you know, pursuing, pressing forward with this career hard. And what's interesting is that like, I feel like my spiritual side of my conscience is with me, like things are working, you know? Um, in fact, the last role I got, it was like an international production, a leading role. And I told them, listen, I, I, I'll take this role, but I'm not working Saturdays on a three month shoot. And they're like, what, are you Jewish? And I'm like, no. And they literally changed the entire schedule. So I never had to work a single Saturday or Friday night. They changed the entire schedule, you know? And so I was like, okay, this is God leading. And so I'm pressing in that direction. And what, what started to become clear was at the end of the second season of that show that I was working on, he started saying, okay, Namiko, it's time for a decision. Because right at that period, LA started calling. I started doing auditions for LA. I had gotten another show um, where I was a team lead and stuff like that. And the vice president of casting at Fox had come to see me and interviewed me in M Montreal. And he's like, we want to see you working. And I'm like, I want to see me working. I love you guys, you know? And everything is building up. So it's like, okay, well, we just need you to come down to LA, you know, cause you already have a portfolio of things. And then pilot season is going to be great for you. So I was super excited about that. And then right at that time, I was also the youth leader at our church and I organized a Youth Week of Prayer. And at the end, 
um, instead of having a speaker, we listened to some tapes. I know it's kind of random because we couldn't get a speaker. And at the end of the youth week of prayer, we all go to the front of the church. And I said, everybody pray and you listen to what God says to you. You do whatever the appeal is, the Holy Spirit. And so I get down and kneel and the Holy Spirit says to me, you're not going to LA. And I'm like, I think I'm getting bad reception on my prayer. <laughs> Let me go over here and try that reception. Like, Lord, what would you have me do? And he's like, you're not going to Los Angeles. And I'm like, what? You know, like, yeah, this, that can't be real. And because I'd been building this up for the last five years of my life, you know? And so God is saying, yeah, you're not going to Los Angeles. And I can't shake this feeling. Talk to my agent and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. And he's like, yeah, you should be ready to go. And basically what happens is um, I get some auditions from LA that were not really good material. And at that point, like cursing and swearing and drinking. And I said, you know what, maybe I shouldn't go. And I made that decision to go right at that point. And, uh, and this is where things kind of really got interesting. So that was your resolution. It's, it's off the table, you're not going to LA. I, yeah, I was literally getting ready for the biggest decision of my life. To, I knew I was gonna book something in LA, you know, cause they were already waiting for me. My agent literally said he went to the offices at Fox and he's like, there's three people on the wall, Alicia Cuthbert, a Hispanic guy, and you at their offices. They wanna see you working to me go. So it's time to go to LA. I was like, okay, let's do this. But then God is like, it is not the time. It is time to step away. So there's a lot of pressure on you now, Amico. You know that the Holy Spirit is talking to you, saying, hey, you're not going to LA. And there's pressure in terms of our time for our program, so you're gonna to have to come back next time. But 
Just tell us a little bit about what happened next. So at this point, it's like, like the first time I really hear the voice of God because it's telling me to do exactly the opposite of what I want to do, right? And so I'm like, okay, maybe this is God speaking to me, you know? And so I decide, because I see the material, some of the auditions I was getting from LA had like alcohol and drugs and cursing. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is not the best thing for me to do right now, you know? And so I decided not to go. Well, about 10 days later, I get a phone call from a childhood friend. I haven't talked to him in months, if not years. This guy calls me and he's like, dude, we have to have a conversation. Something crazy has happened. I'm like, yeah, man, what's up? And he's like, no, I gotta come to your house. I'm like, sure, I give him my address. He's never been there. He drives over an hour, gets to my place. I open the door, I'm like, hey, dude, how's it going? He walks past me, he's like, is anybody else in the house? I'm like, dude, is everything okay? He's like, let's go into the basement. And he literally takes me and he sits me down on my couch and he's pacing back and forth, sweat beads on his forehead. And he's like, listen, man, he's like, I'm gonna tell you something and you cannot tell another soul on this planet, do you understand me? And I'm like, dude, what's going on? So, unfortunately, we've run out of time. <laughs> I, I, I hate to cut the story right now, but we're gonna have to continue next time and you're gonna continue with your story. You wouldn't have received that telephone call if you'd gone to LA though. Exactly. And so God was working there. And so that's enough to be known for now. Yeah. And then next week we will continue. So we're going to end with a word of prayer. I wonder if you can close with a word of prayer for us. Can for you do sure. that for us? Okay, yeah, let's gladly. Pray. Let's do it. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the fact that uh, every single test we have can be turned into a testimony. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's my life experience. I pray that everybody that heard some of what we talked about today, more than anything else, they saw your hand leading and they saw that Jesus wants to be the star of everybody's movie here, dear God. So I thank you so much for your love, for your goodness, goodness and your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Namiko, you have to come back next week. And uh, this is real a cliffhanger. I sort of cut you off there, <laughs> no but, but we're ready to go That's next time. a lot. Time. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Awesome. Friends, Noamiko decided that the number one influence in his life is the Word of God. And that's a good decision. So we want to help you to also understand God's Word, the Bible, for yourself. So our free offer for you today is our Bible study guides. Whether you want to learn the major teachings of God's Word or Bible prophecy, we can assist you to find answers for how to face the issues and challenges you deal with every day. Friends, we want you to experience the truth that is found in the words of Jesus when he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.